so it's February of 2023, and a lot of people in the banking universe are talking about some of the advances in AI, specifically ChatGPT. A lot of people in the banking industry don't know what the heck that is. And one of my good friends, Dave Brock, who is the author of the Sales Manager Survival Guide, which I still believe is the best tome on sales management, and I will refer it until you write your next one, and a prodigious and very thoughtful uh, poster on his own website about all kinds of things. I never read a, a post by Dave that doesn't make me think, and I, I respect that greatly. But Dave's been thinking a lot about AI and specifically chat GPT. So I thought, Dave, I would invite you to you know, talk a little bit in this Ned Talks about that. And I, I guess, uh, first, what is it for the people who sort of look at me and stare and say, I have no idea what you're talking about? Well, well, first, thanks so much, Ned. It's fun to have this conversation. And as kind of a, a warning to people who might be listening to it, is our, the conversation between you and I, as we look at it, our, our intelligence is artificial. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing the right thing. But, you know, is, is AI has been around for years and evolving for years. I mean, particularly in the banking industry, if I, I, I'm involved with a number of fintech startups, you know, and they've been using AI for years and years and years, and banks have been adopting AI for years and years for like creditworthiness and a whole bunch of other kinds of applications and automating some processes um, uh, uh, to do that more effectively. Uh, so AI, my perception is being kind of somewhat outside the banking industry, has is, is been penetrating the banking industry in a huge way. This chat GPT is an interesting thing because it's more of a generalized kind of tool that I can use it for almost anything. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas is before I looked at the AI tools and there are AI tools that were hammers, AI tools that were wrenches, AI mm -hmm. tools that were screwdrivers. But this is a tool that can be used for all sorts of problem solving. You find people using it to develop code. You find, you know, marketers and salespeople saying this is, the, you know, the prospecting gift mm -hmm. um, uh, of the world is that I can use it for, um, uh, for pro you know, customized emails and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, it offers tremendous power. I think the worry that I have right now is people don't understand the strengths and weaknesses of AI, particularly this tool, and they're applying it in very, I mean, dumb ways, mm -hmm. uh, and they're missing the opportunity to use it in very smart ways. Well, you, I know you've been testing it out. You've been experimenting with it. Uh, you're discovering some things about its uh, capabilities. What would you say, you know, is a, a positive use, and what would you say is kind of a dumb use or something that people who don't quite understand its power are, are actually falling victim to? So I, I think a positive, a lot has been made of it for as a writing tool. Mm -hmm. And when I, I look at, at the writing is, you know, if, for instance, I compare its writing to my writing mm -hmm. is grammar, spelling, even the structure of the writing is much better than my writing. It's, but it is, the impression I have is it's dull. Mm -hmm. It's safe. It's, it's it's not controversial, it's not inspiring, because what it can't do is that we do in a lot of our writing is we bring a personality or a style to it that actually attracts people to reading it. We bring mm -hmm. maybe some specific context mm -hmm. uh, or, or some something specific to an industry or an organization that chat just isn't able to do right now. So, so it's it's you know very general content, well constructed. It tends to be very wordy mm -hmm. um, because it's trying to give you a complete. One of the things they've done in the rule structure is try to make it very balanced. So what it does is it always gives you a pros and cons kind mm -hmm. of answer to something in its pros. So the other big problem I I have. So in some sense, it's good writing. What I would tend to do is I would tend to take its writing 
as my rough draft, mm -hmm. then I would tend to edit it and personalize it. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's good. The other, let, the, let me just let me just make a quick comment for bankers. There are people that in the banking industry that are looking at it as a strategic tool in some respects. I, I talked to uh, the uh, chief technology officer for a community bank, and he was experimenting. And so he asked uh, Chat GPT for uh, a strategic planning document, a think piece on community bank strategy in terms of technology. And he got it back, and he said. Five of the things they said were pretty pedestrian. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, four of the things were outlandish and mm -hmm. discard. But he said one thing was something he'd never thought of. And see, that's where I'm getting a huge amount of power out of chat GPT is rather than asking it to write things for me, I ask it, I, I ask it what questions should I be asking? Mm -hmm. What things should I be thinking of? So I'll pose a scenario in saying, you know, if, if I see this kind of thing happening in the banking industry, in, let me say, you know, um, commercial banking, uh, if I see these kinds of things happening, what are the things I might be thinking about? What are the issues that we and other commercial bankers are, are facing? And, and it comes back with some questions. And then what I do is I might, like your friend, is I found, well, you know, out of 10 questions it comes back to me with is seven or eight I had already kind of realized one may not be, you know, that great or that relevant. But one is something that I hadn't thought of, or it, it, it's, it's expressed in a way that I hadn't thought of mm -hmm. that causes me to, to start thinking differently. And what I do is I take those questions and I drill down. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I want Chet to keep coming back to me with is questions mm -hmm. or, you know, what are issues I should be thinking about? I, you know, so the writing isn't very valuable to me, but the way it prompts me to say, am I missing something? Do I have a mm -hmm. point of view that may be too biased or, or just through lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. I may be missing something. So it's, it's getting those questions it, to help me think more clearly, maybe to confirm I'm thinking about some of the things correctly and so on. So that's, to me, that's the great power of, of chat GPT is, is using it for that, not using it to write you know, 10,000 emails and, 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 and mail them out. Um, which, we're, which we're already starting to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I'm, I, I've been, su su again, surprised by it. The one caveat I have with it, and it's, it's clear the problem right now, they'll solve it, is ChatGPT's databases haven't been updated since 2021. Hmm. So if you think of, you know, a lot of people are saying we can use this for research for customers or even research for markets and so on and so forth. Well, think back at the way the markets looked and the way the banking mm -hmm. industry looked in 2021. We had extremely low interest rates, mm -hmm. you know, low, low inflation, a very mm -hmm. vibrant economy coming back from the pandemic and so on and so forth. Fast forward to today, you know, high interest rates, you know, uh, probably going into a recession and so on and so forth. So the insights, just because of the limitations of the database, mm -hmm. are, are, are rather dated. You know, I went, yeah. I, I was testing it the other day. I went into, you know, I asked it, said, this industry, this circumstance, given the current economy, what are the things we should be uh, careful about? It, couldn't recognize that mm -hmm. interest rates were sky high, that we're going into a recession. It says, you know, basically something, you know, um, you know, easy access to cash, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Uh, it did uh, offer some caveats that things could change. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so that's a big issue. And, and the other thing, too, and this is why, you know, people, I'm wandering all over the place, but this is why I think people, you know, I like Google queries. Mm -hmm. The problem I have with chat is I don't know where it got its information. Mm. 
I don't know um, how it developed its opinion. Um, and so I could easily be wrong. What I like about Google is I go do a search. I may type in a sentence, you know, what's happening in this, so on and so forth. And I get a whole list, you know, pages and pages, you know, you know, we found 115,000 references. Well, it's usually millions of references mm -hmm. on this topic in so many, so many seconds is now I can start looking through and I can start looking at different points of view. I start mm -hmm. seeing who expressed that point of view is, is, you know, if I see, you know, Ned Miller is expressing this point of view, uh, I ignore, no, <laughs> I, I pay attention to it because I really respect the way you think. You know, if, on the contrary, if I said Dave Brock is expressing this point of view around commercial banking, I would tend to discount it because I don't know what I'm talking about in commercial banking. And well, we'll so probably we'll probably have to edit that part out of this conversation because that would be bad. Uh, so let me let me pose a, a final question, and it has to do with how you think uh, bankers and, and maybe just business people should approach uh, ChatGPT. It's a free app. Uh, yeah. We know that won't be forever. We know that because Microsoft just decided to invest $10 billion in the company that's put it together that, you know, Microsoft will put its stamp on. But what would you say in the short run business people really ought to do with ChatGPT? Well, they are they are launching a $20 per month subscription service, which I think is is really cheap. And I be, you know, yeah. I'm going to be paying the $20 a month. I, again, I think uh, I think using it to help test assumptions that you might have mm -hmm. using, and, and even in very specific situations, like you're looking at a particular customer or you're looking at maybe a particular offering that you might make or, or some programs that you might implement, using it to ask questions or to generate questions and issues mm -hmm. for you to, again, it might reaffirm what you're thinking or as, as your friend discovered and as I discovered, there's always one or two things that when property said, oh yeah, I forgot about that, or this is new to me. So I think to, to help test and improve the quality of our own thinking, yeah. uh, that's the primary use for it. I think over time, as the databases get updated, I think um, with some kind of um, marketing programs, with some sort of maybe more mass communications, I think it can be very good, but I think it has to be very highly refined. So you'll, yeah. I'm not sure that you necessarily save a lot of time, but I think the quality of the output, if you take the time to go in, and I think if you take the time to go through and use it to refine what you're doing and drill deeper, You'll, you'll get it. You'll never get it very specific and very focused. So for individual customer situations, I don't see it very useful right now. But for more kind of market type things and so on, I would do it. And it's going to evolve phenomenally. And there are a whole bunch of tools, you know, chat because it's so easy and so accessible for people like you and I to use it mm -hmm. uh, is getting a lot of publicity. But there's so many AI tools that tend to be more specialized in function yeah. Yeah. that are actually going to provide, I think, better solutions sooner. A again, I look at, you know, I, for about the last six years, I've been involved with uh, about half a dozen fintech companies, mm -hmm. um, uh, startups, and what they're doing is very, very interesting stuff. Well, I think the message that I'd take away from this is, you know, stay tuned. Uh, I would encourage uh, all my banker friends to, uh, to follow Dave on LinkedIn and also read his posts because I think you'll be ruminating and uh, reflecting on this and a lot of other sales management topics. So Dave, thanks for, for joining me. Again, it's February. You know, In March, we may be singing a different story about this thing. This may be the, uh, the clubhouse of 2023, but I don't think so. Well, and what I would encourage everybody to do is start experimenting with it yourself. I mean, it has had capacity problems. So sometimes you try and sign on and you can't get in. But I've noticed in just the last two weeks, it's improved quite a bit. But just experiment with it and start figuring it out for yourself. Great. Great advice. Dave, thank you again. It's always, always fun to be with you.
Oh, it's so much fun. Thanks, Ned.